And as a visitor to your country, I've uh, been listening um, with great interest and curiosity to, to get a sense of what the situ situation is like in, in Singapore for women. And, you know, yesterday the first couple of speakers um, presented a very optimistic view and I heard a couple of them say that Singapore was a really great place um, to be working as a woman. I heard meritocracy being used as, um, as an explanation for why it was so good in that meritocracy means that you know, we have the opportunity to advance um, according to our worth, according to our value. And over the last two days, as I've been listening um, and listening to more conversations or having more conversations with people and hearing different perspectives, I've actually come up with the view that the situation is very similar here in Singapore as it is for women. There are still far too many women working twice as hard as men to almost get to the same positions. Meritocracy uh, is all about others recognising that you are better than others who have also applied for the position that you're after. And women need to be a lot more strategic in, uh, about how we position ourselves. We are working hard, we do have a lot of stressors, we do have a lot of responsibilities, and we don't need to make it any harder for ourselves so today what I want to do is to share with you some perspectives, give you some tools, give you some strategies, and give you some opportunities to practice, which means it might be interactive, <laughs> um, some things that might make it easier for you to get ahead without having to work quite as hard. And I have to say, I really wish I'd known this 10 years ago. I worked for IBM for 10 years, and I left about... I can't remember now, a long time ago, about 13 years ago, um, when I started noticing that some of the guys who weren't working nearly as hard or as long or bringing in nearly as much revenue, I was in sales, as I was, were getting ahead before me. For the first five years of my career, I had a great time at IBM. I could work the clock. <clears throat> I could um, get to work at six o'clock, I could leave at midnight, I could do all-nighters, I was pumped on adrenaline, I could go to all the networking schmoozing functions, and I did really well. And then I had a child, and then I became a single mother, and then life wasn't quite so rosy. I was still working at, for IBM as hard as I was prior to uh, me being there, uh, before my son was born. However, I was not being seen. I was not visible. I could no longer go to the networking functions. I could no longer be seen and heard and recognized and valued for my contribution. And when I realized that, in fact, you know, I was still bringing in at that time around $30 million in revenue for IBM and some colleagues of mine who were bringing, being much less successful, not making their numbers nearly as regularly as I were, were being um, promoted, I decided to leave and work out and go and study, work out what went on in organisations to create that sort of dynamic where women who were bringing in a lot of money, doing a really good job, were leaving or not being recognised for their contribution and not getting to the positions where they needed to be. So... I'm hoping that today you'll, have, you'll take away with you some insights, some strategies, some tools. As with anything, take what you like, leave the rest. But my goal is always to help create women with more opportunities, more tools uh, and strategies so that there's greater choice. And we've heard that word a few times over the last two days. Greater choice um, for you to actually use in getting ahead. All right, anyone recognize these? I've worked so hard to deliver this and no one has noticed. Don't they realize how long it took me to write that report? I'm efficient, I'm professional, I don't make any waves, I get the job done and yet no one notices me. Anyone relate to those? Anyone had th thoughts like that? Hands up, let's get some movement happening in this very long room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do these comments all have in common? 
Say that again. Yeah, well, these people don't get noticed, right? Why aren't they getting noticed? What's the focus on? Me? Yeah, the focus is on the work I'm doing, the hours I'm I'm here, not the results. Working hard, being good at what you do, is not a sufficient career strategy. It is not enough to be good at what you do. If it was, there'd be more women in very senior positions all across the world. Yeah? It is not enough to be good at what you do. You have to be seen, you have to be heard, you have to be noticed and valued for what you do. And we could get better at doing, at doing ourselves a service and promoting how good we are. Let's look at why it's so important. Organisations are hierarchical, which means there are fewer and fewer positions as you go up the top, which means it's a competition. It means that we have to compete with others. And if people that we're competing with are better at playing a game to win than we are, if they're better at being noticed, if they're better at being visible, if they're better at telling people how good they are, and we're not doing it, then we're likely to be overlooked. And people are likely to get confused and think that we're not nearly as good or as capable as we usually are. And who are better at playing games? Who are better at competing? Who are better at taking up space, being visible, (laughs) bragging? Anyone want to put out a suggestion? (laughs) It wouldn't be fair, but it's real. (laughs) Yeah, Guys are much better at positioning themselves. Guys are much better at promoting how good they are. Guys are much better at bragging. They're much better at sounding like they know what they're talking about, even despite the evidence. Yeah? Who has sons? Who, who hangs out with blokes? <laughs> has anyone noticed that I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah? I've got, a, I've got a 20-year-old lab rat. I've watched him grow up. I've observed his behavior. I have seen him with his male friends. They all take it at turns at one-upping themselves, at telling each other how great they are. My, my son's a snowboarder. He's a good snowboarder. He's not as good as he tells everyone he is. <laughs> they know that. He knows that. It's a game. They all do it. We don't. Men are much better at navigating hierarchies for this reason. They are used to hanging out in large groups. They are used to being heard. They are used to um, elevating their status. They are motivated, indeed, to be out, to not move into a low status role. They want to be seen as the best. The The boy who's the best is seen as the leader. They compete by giving orders, by bossing each other around. They challenge each other. They play fight. And I'm sure it's much the same in your country as it is in mine. Indeed, I've seen it happen. (laughs) Girls, on the other hand, thank you, hang out in smaller groups. We downplay with our differences. We've heard a lot in the last two days about the differences between men and women. This is how it plays out in organisations. We balance our needs with the needs of others. Girls grow up or are socialised often to have a best friend and to share secrets, to fit in, to be the same. 